It's a slower market, don't get me wrong, but things, they're still selling. It's the properties that are more than priced right, or in other words, the seller's willing to offer a discount. Those are the properties that are selling. Showing activity, it's slow. If you're a seller and just doing showings on the weekends, then you're just shooting yourself in the foot. The weekly showing is more important than ever, as so many people use this time to go away on the weekends. If you're a seller and need to sell in this market, then be sure to price aggressively or get prepared to sit on the market for a bit. In this video, we're gonna go over the single family and condo market stats in the state of Massachusetts. We're also gonna do a quick interest rate update and talk about some relevant current events. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker toward real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then no, I'm here to help. Buyers beware. You're going to have to start paying buyer agency fees. If you don't wanna be on the hook for paying two and a half to 3% when buying a house, then take a look at our purchase power plan. In this plan, buyers pay for our services by the hour. Instead of a percentage of the purchase price, this can save home buyers possibly tens of thousands of dollars. Reach out if you're looking to buy a house and well, want to save a small fortune in fees. Let's jump into the single family market stats, inventory is level, and it's going to be that way until the end of August. Then it's going to plummet for Labor Day weekend and then start growing again in the fall. We now have 5,078 single family homes on the market in the state of Massachusetts. This is up from 5,075 units last week and 5,059 units from two weeks ago. We now have 0.06% fewer homes on the market than just 28 days ago. 0.06%. We have 1,464 more houses on the market when compared to the same week last year, but are 391 houses short of the levels in 2022. Buyers, did you hear that? You have nearly 1,500 more single family houses to choose from than compared to the same time last year. Value hunters can find some value in this market. This week, we listed 928 single family homes in the state of Massachusetts. This is a drop of nearly 100 units when compared to last week, but these 29 units are 3.2% more homes than the same week back in 2023. That four week rolling average is 932 units. And coincidentally, we put 932 single family homes under agreement. Now this is 15 units or 1.6% more than the same week last year. We put 917 houses under agreement. That four week rolling average for under agreements is 961 units. So when compared to last year's market, new listings were up by 3.2% while under agreements, they were up by 1.6%. The pending to new listing ratio is 90.9%, which is compared to the 102.6% that we saw this week last year. It continues week after week as we've seen our pending to new listing ratio below the same week last year. Now this year's market continues to be weaker than last year. This metric shows it, but so does months of inventory. There were 849 single family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $861,000 and a median sales price of $685,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were off by 395 units or 31.8% there are 1,244 single family homes that sold this week last year for an average sales price of $797,000. Now, last year's data to match up with this week would have run the last two days of the month. We always see more closings at the end of the month. In other words, this large decrease in this as well as the condo market is not something to look deep into. This week, months of inventory, it slipped a little bit to 1.8 months from last week's 1.81 months. 1.8 months this week is compared to 1.32 months this week back last year. Now, real quick, it's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a house, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now onto the condo market. We now have 2,804 condos on the market as of Monday. This is compared to the 2,785 from last week and the 2,819 from two weeks ago. This means that there is 0.07% less inventory in the market today than just 28 days ago, 0.07%. We now have 722 more units on the market today than today last year, 111 more than compared to the inventory levels of 2022 and 64 more units than in 2021. There are 377 condos that came on the market last week with that four week rolling average of 392 units. Now, the 377 units listed was 23 units or six and a half percent more than the 354 condos that came on the market the same week back in 2023. This week, we put 312 units under agreement. Now this 312 condo sales was 61 units or 16.4 percent fewer condos and last year we put 373 condos under agreement that four week rolling average for under agreements that's 379 units so six and a half percent more listings that came on
the market when compared to this week last year, while selling 16.4% fewer condos. The condo pending to new listing ratio this week jumped to 70.7%. This is compared to the 91.9% that we saw this time last year. Huh, that's a big drop off right there. There were 317 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $691,000 and a median sales price of $560,000. Again, the same week last year, there were 507 condos that sold. Huge discrepancy there, don't get thrown off, but sales levels were off by 37.5%. Months of inventory, that increased to 2.23 months from last week's 2.18 months. This is compared to the months of inventory levels of 1.65 months this week last year just like the single family market the pending to new listing ratio and the months of inventory show that the market is weaker than last year and it's just you just do me a huge favor can you hit that like button right down there believe it or not it just makes a huge difference for me and the channel it just plays with that youtube algorithm well subscribing if you're enjoying the content then i appreciate you considering subscribing as that one helps as well but time to talk about interest rates this week we gained a little more ground in the mortgage market Rates are down, and we actually started this week with six-month lows. Interest rates should stay relatively level as we head towards the September rate decision by the Fed. The more bad news in the economy, then the lower the interest rates are going to be. Now, I'm going to do a little rapid fire of some things in my mind that matters. First up, check this article out. Home buyers are scoring lower interest rates by finding assumable loans. Now, I actually had someone reach out about finding assumable loans. This is a lot harder than it sounds, and all these guys are the media is making it out to be. First, you need to find a seller with a loan that's assumable. Now, these are going to be government-backed loans like VA loans and FHA loans. Next, find that seller that's actually willing to sell and then getting approved to take over that loan and then finding the boatload of cash to pay the difference between the loan amount and the sales price. So if the house is worth $500,000 and the loan balance is $300,000, then great. You just assume the $300,000 note, but you need to come to the table with $200,000 in cash. It's not the easy answer that so many people think it is. Then there's this news. U.S. home prices rose for the 15th straight month and hit another record high. Now, home prices in May increased 5.9% nationally year over year. The national 20-city composite rose 6.8% while prices increased in every one of the 20 major metro markets. The largest price gain was actually in New York at 9.4%. Now, there continues to be a shortage of housing, which is continuing to push prices up. And it's not going to get any better. Check this one out. The share of young adults living with their parents is the highest since 1940. 17% of young adults from the age of 25 to 35 are living with their parents. Eventually, they're going to move out. Just one more lever to pull on that pent-up demand awaiting the real estate market. Now, something that I've always said, and I'm excited to hear someone else finally saying it, is the Redfin CEO says that housing market is in a funk as homeowners weigh election uncertainty. I've always felt election years mess with the market, and it doesn't matter which side of the fence that you're on. The constant drumbeat of negative news affects the confidence of the consumer, which affects their willingness to buy large items. And since so many buyers want to talk about a real estate crash, here are the markets that have had the biggest growth in housing stock from 2013 to 2022. Huge increases in housing stock can create market speculation. Market speculation can create excess, which can then increase the chances of a crash. Notice how Massachusetts isn't on there. But if you really want to talk about a real estate crash, as I've said in one of my most recent videos, it's not the residential market. It's in the commercial market. I'm actually going to start beating this one like a drum to show how bad it is to people. So that way they understand that the real estate crash is happening right now. And just because it's happening, then it doesn't mean it's going to spread to another segment. Now, the gas company tower in downtown LA has plummeted over $400 million in value. The skyscraper was recently valued at $214.5 million. It was appraised for $632 million just three years ago. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Again, it's Jeff Chubb. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a house in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out a little bit more about your real estate goals. And if you know of anyone that's thinking about buying or selling a house, then I truly appreciate you passing along all my contact information. You can visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com or find all my contact information in the description right down there. And by the way, that's right where that like button is as well. So hit that like button. But until next time.